I'm Lorna from Thread and Yarn. Um, this is a channel where I show you things that I've made, whether it's uh, sewing or knitting or natural dye. This is going to be part two of the intro into my new made capsule wardrobe. I posted the first video a couple of weeks ago and um, here's a link to check it out. I walked you through a bit of an intro in to the things I've made, um, what my sort of aesthetic and, and style is and how I've sort of been figuring that out over time. Some of the things that have worked and some of the things that haven't and that I still need to go back and fix. <laughs> in fact, this Me Made May, um, one of my, well, my main challenge is to go back over those makes that uh, I've left things not finished as well as I should have um, or things that have sort of worn away and fix them so that I can incorporate them back into my wardrobe and make use of them instead of just making lots of new stuff. I do like making new things as well, but it's great to sort of cherish the things that you have made. So yeah, this is part two. I'm gonna be showing you a bit more about what I've been making and um, wearing of the ears. And I've made a couple of adjustments. So last time people said it was a little bit quiet. So I boosted the sound on this one while I wait for my microphone. Hopefully you can hear it better, let me know if not. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna do some full length shots as well so that you can see what it looks like as I'm wearing it, how it sort of moves, um, whether it's comfortable or not, things like that. So I'll talk you through that and hopefully you'll get a better visual of the clothes. So if you like what you see, if you like this video, if you're interested in knitting, sewing and all things, sort of making cozy, please subscribe, like this video. I'm just starting out so it really helps and it's nice to have a conversation with you and meet more of you. So to get us started, I will talk to you about what I'm wearing here. So this is the Anna Allen Anthea blouse. It's been a really popular pattern um, and it's really quite simple to make. So I've made this in a Merchant and Mills linen, I think it's called Homestead. Um, it's a really lovely sort of um, warm brown, dark yellow check with a very pale lilac. It looks almost sort of a grey white, but it is got a, has got a lilac tone to it, which I really love the sort of subtlety of. And I think the softness um, of the linen and the warm colours is just gorgeous with this sort of quite romantic pattern. So if I step back so you can see, it's quite a loose shaped blouse, big puffy sleeves, round neck collar, although I've seen people hacking this. I mean, it's quite simple shapes really, so if I untuck it. So it is quite, um, you know, open to making adjustments too. You can make a dress version as well, um, but I quite like the shirt one for now. I quite like it tucked in and then you can see the sort of movement of the, of the fabric. Um, I've made the sort of shorter sleeve version with a bit of bias binding. I did have to shorten the bias based on the pattern. Um, I'm not sure if that's because my linen stretched a bit or because I just prefer it not to fall down loads and for it to sort of um, sit around my elbow. I think it creates quite a nice puffed shape. So I wear this one quite a lot. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy make, pretty easy wear. And I'm wearing it today with these Anna Allen um, Helene jeans, which I've made in a um, Merchant and Mills. Sound obsessed. But there's so many nice warm autumn colours <laughs> in a um, caramel cord, it's a dead stock cord. Um, and I'll show you a bit more of those. I really like this colour of the cord, it's a sort of um, yeah, warm caramel colour. Um, and I did a slightly lighter top stitching, as you can see. I spent quite a long time getting the top stitching for these right. Um, I posted a top stitching video recently, um, I'll put a link to it here just about some tips of how to get that top stitching looking as neat as possible. Um, I think on jeans in particular, um, it's important for it to sort of look right and, and have the sort of right neat look that you're gonna want. Um, but also it's important for robustness. Um, I want these to wear well. I want there to be strong pockets, strong belt loops. Um, I haven't hemmed these yet while I decide <laughs> on the length that I want them. I often do this where I, um, where I roll up the, the bottom and decide what length I want. So that's why they're roll ups at the moment. But if you can see that they're really quite comfortable. Um, I think I would lengthen the rise a bit next time. But other than that, the fit was perfect. I made it exactly to my um, to the size recommendations. Um, I often find that Anna Allen's patterns fit me quite well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested to make another pair of these. I've got a really rigid white bull denim. 
it's 14 ounce. Um, I'm hoping that my machine will be all right with it. Um, but I think they can make a really cool pair of denim jeans. Right, so next up is this Friday Pattern Company Pattern Blouse. Um, this is made in a gorgeous blue cotton from um, this lovely little haberdashery in Stroud called In Stitches. Um, and yeah, I quite like the sort of uh, rustic look it's got, but the uh, rickrack, the slightly darker rickrack um, from William G has this, I don't know, just gives it this really nice finish, sort of low contrast, um, but a little bit special, a little bit of detail. Um, I, yeah, I like this pattern. Uh, I was unsure at first whether or not I would sort of like the more formal shapes, but um, I'm into it. Always like a puffy sleeve. Um, sometimes I prefer sort of a general amount of volume rather than this um, quite specific puff on the shoulder because I worry it looks a little bit uh, costumey, <laughs> I guess. But I really like it and I think the sort of softness of the pattern of the cotton um, makes the sharper lines of this uh, still quite loose and romantic, which I quite like in a, in a blouse. Um, went for some low contrast buttons as well from Merchant and Mills, which I really like. And I'll just show you a bit more of the shirt. I finished it with a bit more rickrack around the sleeve as well, which I quite like, and some binding. Again, I made the binding um, rather than a placket, and I made it a bit a bit narrower, um, just because I like it to feel snug. This is a classic me thing. I haven't hemmed it. <laughs> I just I wanted to wear it, so I, I tucked it into my jeans and I never got around to hemming it. Uh, I'm really bad for doing that. So that's one of my things in Me Made May is I'm going to go around and fix these sorts of things. You can see. There you go. So there's the, there's the real life guts behind the nice photo. <laughs> also really like wearing it um, with this knitted slipover. So this is the Moonset slipover by Azetta. Um, I test knitted it uh, for Azetta. Um, and yeah, I really liked it. I made a couple of changes. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, I did a split ribbed hem, which I just think sits nicely. I wanted to do a cropped version, so it sits nicely um, at the top of my jeans. Uh, so I'm happy with that. This, um, I can't remember what wool it was now, but um, I'll find out. But it's, I wear it a lot and it's worn really well. It's quite a nice, easy, wearable colour. I'll show you what it looks like with a shirt. So I was trying to get something that was a slightly different colour to normal. Um, I normally go for like very warm sort of autumn-y colours, but I quite like the cooler shades here. I quite like the combo together. Uh, I'll show you how it sits on the top of my jeans. So this is the Zadie jumpsuit. I think I've made about five of these. Uh, really wearable, really easy pattern. Um, one of the first ones I ever made actually. Uh, sewing as an adult and yeah I still love to make them. There's different options as well, you can do long sleeved. Um, I've made a slightly narrower legged version because I wanted a smile to look. Some of my other Zadies are quite sort of breezy and relaxed but this one I wanted to be able to wear um, out in the evening and I've made a more tailored look to the trouser. One thing I would say is that I've noticed on some of them the um, belt opening starts to sort of track upwards or fray or look a bit untidy but this one I'm quite happy with and um, this is one of the ones I've made more recently. I've overlocked the edges or you could do a really narrow zigzag stitch and I reinforced it several times when I did the seam just to make sure it didn't move because um, it has quite a lot of sort of stress on it with the waistband coming out so there's just a couple of things I did which I think made this one um, a bit neater um, and a bit smarter. So this is another paper theory pattern. It is the Euler shirt. I've never said that out loud. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is one I made several years ago and I felt like I'd really leveled up in my sewing when I did this one. I'd never done plackets before. I'd never done a formal shirt before. I struggled a bit on the, um, the collar join. Um, not the collar join, the shoulder join, but the paper theory site has a really good uh, picture guide and walks you through each of the steps. Um, so when I, I struggled a bit, but when I finished this one, I just felt so much more confident um, and I've made a few since then, which have all gone sort of much more easily. I was really happy with the sort of the detail of the pleats on the, um, the sleeve placket. 
uh, and around the cuff. And it's got this um, sort of yoke, front yoke, uh, which I like. I haven't done the front pocket on this one because it was my first one, uh, but I've done it on subsequent ones. Um, but yeah, I really like it. I'll show you a bit more of it. Sadly, I did shrink this one in the wash just slightly. Uh, it was a lot more oversized than this. Um, I did pre-wash the fabric, but there we go. Yeah, so it's a bit shorter, but I still like it. I'll still wear it. <laughs> so this one is really special to me. It's the Cyclamen Lysamic uh, blouse. It's quite a pretty little white hemp blouse. But what I really love about it is this uh, cotton lace. So this was given to me by my grandmother and I found out um, when I was about 10. So it took me over 20 years to figure out what to use it for. Um, but uh, I found out recently that it was given to her by her mother. So it's from my great grandmother, which just feels really special. Um, and whenever I wear it, I just feel really connected to this heritage of crafting women um, running through my family. So yeah, I just, I love it. Um, it's a pretty cute blouse as well. Um, so I was happy to use it for this in the end. I also quite like wearing it um, with these uh, Helene jeans, which I've been wearing lots and breaking them in, but also with this um, Merchant and Mills Miller waistcoat. So I made this in a black needle cord from Sew Me Sunshine and then used some uh, linen remnants to do the lining. Uh, it's a really cool little layer actually. It's the first waistcoat I've ever made. Um, in a sort of formal waistcoat way. I've made lots of vests before, um, but I'll show you what it looks like. I've got a pirate vibe to it with these uh, Helene jeans, and I really enjoy that. Um, this is what it looks like buttoned up. If I could do the buttons up. So I added waist ties to the back instead of doing the sort of um, the belt pull um, and I just quite like the sort of relaxed look of it. I didn't want it to look too formal um, but uh, yeah. There it is. Um, I made welt pockets for the first time when I made this. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. They're, they're not sort of the neatest welt pockets ever. I've made better ones since but um, I'm pretty happy with them for a first go. I think using black was a good idea for first welt pockets. But as you can see, this fabric gathers dust. Something else I wanted to show you while we're talking of waistcoats and vests is this um, summer sort of uh, waistcoat pattern um, that I've drafted myself. Um, I'm currently trying to digitise and that hopefully will be available for testing soon. I'm quite excited, it'll be my first pattern. Um, but I really wanted a sort of a, a boxy, waistcoat vest. I'm trialling sort of ties at the back because I quite liked it when I did that hack um, or maybe an elastic channel um, but with the option to just leave it boxy but it's got it's got more shaping on the front as you can see and a bit of shaping on the back. I think it'll look really cool um, with jeans or with a skirt for summer. Um, I'll try it on and show you but this is going to be the sort of fitted version but there's going to be a looser one that you can make with thicker fabric with like Sherpa or wool for winter. I think it'd be really cool with some decorative sort of edge stitching, like a blanket stitch. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about this. Um, I think one of the mock-ups I'm going to make is going to be in denim. And I think it would be really nice to have a fitted denim vest um, with a bias cut skirt or something. That's my idea. Well, I'll show you this. Bear in mind, this is still in a muslin um, fabric. And I haven't sort of done all the finishing. But I just wanted to show you the shape uh, while we're talking about waistcoats. But it's very much a work in progress, but I'll keep you updated. Um, I'm going to make some mock-ups soon, and I'm super excited. I also think I'd make a really cool matching set with some summer shorts. Like, it'd be nice as a sort of beige linen, I think, with sort of linen pleated shorts or deep pockets. Kind of an 80s vibe. So thanks for watching this part two of my Me Made Capsule wardrobe. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was interesting. Um, I hope also that it was louder and that you enjoyed being able to see the full length shots. So let me know what you think in the comments. Um, upcoming video wise, I've got um, 
one that I'm going to show you of all the adjustments I've made through Me Made Me, all the little fixes I've done, making sure that my garments um, last for longer um, and that I actually get use out of the ones I'm not wearing because there's just not something quite right about it. So I'm going to do one about that um, and then I've got another one. So I recently went to uh, Wales, the Pembrokeshire coast on holiday um, and I took a whole wardrobe of Me Made items, uh, some dresses and uh, shirts and uh, dungarees and I found a little bit of a um, yeah a sort of collage uh, montage of um, different shots of my me made clothes out in the wild so I'm quite excited about that I'm going to put that together it might not have any voiceover it's just going to be a sort of quite soothing collection of um, yeah enjoying the fabrics and the makes um, I'll list all the patterns and everything um, but I hope you like that one too. I'm hoping to finish that one at the weekend. So we will see, but I'm hoping it'll be quite relaxing. Um, and there's nice shots of Pembrokeshire and Wales and also a few doggies. So yeah, but anyway, if you liked this video, um, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to my channel. It's great to meet more of you um, and I'll always welcome your comments. So thanks for joining.